Hello, welcome to State of the Arts. I'm your host, Jason Hedden, and uh, we're coming to you from the campus of Gulf Coast State College in Panama City, Florida. And in this series, we like to interview movers and shakers in the local art scene. And today, my guest is Charlie Wilson. Charlie, thanks for being here. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if I'm a mover or a shaker. One I, or the other. I, I've, I've known you to both move and shake oh, well. over the years. I don't so. move as well as I used to, <laughs> but... Well, you know, I, I think of you as an actor and a director and a designer, um, an arts administrator. Most people think of you as connected to Kaleidoscope Theater, uh, obviously one of the founders. And we were talking before we started that we're, what, now in the 45th season? 45th, yes. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, congratulations. So um, give, give us the short history version. How did you, how did you come to, to start Kaleidoscope? Well, this was in 1970 when um, I, w I was teaching at Bay High, and uh, Anna Kelly, who was a drama teacher, wanted some help, and uh, I was interested in doing stuff like that. So we, um, I ended up writing a play because we couldn't get the money to buy scripts, right. and uh, we we did it. And one of the cast members was uh, his father was a member of the Panama City Beach Men's Club, and they had just finished doing a series on. Um, series of programs on juvenile delinquency. So he, he wanted to do something positive that had to do with uh, teenagers, so mm -hmm. he invited us to come and speak. And the um, mayor, Panama City Beach, was a member of the club, and during our little question and answer afterwards, he said, what would it take to start a, a theater out here on the beach for the tourists? We just opened the Beach Civic Center, and we're trying to get people to come. And so we said, well, uh, we'll have to go research that. And we came back, you know, we went out and saw the facility. It was brand new and not nice. It was just a big, huge room. It had a little mm -hmm. bandstand stage that was there. And um, so we did our research and said, well, we need so many lights. And so this came back with something like $6,000 worth of stuff we needed to mm -hmm. start. So we went to the, to the next um, meeting, the council meeting, and one of the, uh, the city councilmen said, well, we have $6,000 individual things that we can donate that we're allowed to, to put where we want to. You can have my, have my money. Hmm. So then we were stuck. We had, to, we had nothing better, nothing, no way to get out of it. We yeah. had to start it. So we put a notice in the paper and had people uh, come and we discussed it. And that's pretty much how we got started. We had... We, our first show was a show that we had just done at, at Bay High mm -hmm. because, again, we had no money to start, right, start right. with anything. Uh, so we repeated that. We had 26 people in the cast, and our first audience was 13. Wow. And we doubled it for our second audience, so we were <laughs> thrilled. Uh, interesting, it, st it stayed about that until the tour tourists weren't coming. It was people from in town that was coming. So after the tour season was over, suddenly our our number shot up, so it was kind of an interesting, we started as a tourist attraction and mm -hmm. ended up being for locals. Wow. Did, is that part of what prompted the move into into town and, and then finally into yeah. Lynn Haven? As, as welcome as we were to come to the Civic Center, as soon as they started getting more people coming out there, the less time they let us have free. And sure. so we had to end up, uh, we spent about a year just kind of going around from place to place, school auditoriums and uh, Four Winds restaurant downtown, and and we finally ended up where we are now. Okay. Well, it, I've heard this said, and I don't know if it, if it's true that uh, one of the things about Kaleidoscope is it's it's the largest or one of the only all volunteer theaters in the state or in the region. Is that is that still the case? Or I don't know. When we started, we were I think we were the only all volunteer company in the in the state, but. I think I'm pretty sure that's not the case anymore, but um, I think we probably have been around pretty much as long as anybody else has, if not yeah, longer. For sure. Well, you've, uh, I'll skip around a little bit, you know, so how have you seen the local art scene, you know, change, you know, since the early 70s in terms of, you know, we, we were talking beforehand about there being more offerings just sort of in theater. What's What's your mm -hmm. take on the the local art scene and how you've seen it evolve in your time? Well, if we go by what's playing in town this weekend, we'll see that it's grown quite a bit. We started right. out, there, we're the only uh, group producing theater at the college, I think, did mu a musical every year at that time. Um, 
Mary Ellen Warner was uh, um, in charge of, and she was a uh, music, that was her music thing, so she wanted to give her students a chance to sure. do a musical. And I think that was pretty much the only theater. There was a, a group before us, the Panama City Players, hmm. uh, that they had, um, I think they were fairly a very close group, or the impression I get is it was a fairly close group, and then once they all got to be a certain age, they kind of dwindled out. But uh, we we gained a few of them for our, our group when we started, mm -hmm. but there was not a whole lot of things going on then, and it's certainly now, uh, so things going on everywhere. Yeah. Well, it's it's exciting. You know, we we recently had a, a Amelia Center Honors event uh, celebrating uh, Rosie's career, and I saw you and, and Sandy there, and it was great. And it, it got me thinking, um, you know, how many people over the years, um, actors who have gone on to do other things, have come through uh, Kaleidoscope, and who have you know you know that was their first experience. I remember even as a as a high school student, and there's still this draw, like. There's just something about the intimacy of that venue that people they want to work there. You know, they, you got to mm -hmm. do a show at Kaleidoscope. Um, I remember, I don't know which came first, but I always tell this story about you, so I'm going to tell it on the air. Um, that I was I was blown away by the set for Romeo and Juliet. It was the first time I'd ever seen like real scenic design with with faux rock painting and you know all the stone work. You know, I I still remember being in awe of that. But I also remember being so impressed with your costume work and the fact that you had constructed these elaborate costumes and a lot of the detail had been done before you even cast the show and I remember seeing the costumes and they had at least in my mind there was a couple extra feet of fabric hanging off the back not knowing who the particular actors would be for it mm -hmm. and then the other thing I remember from you is I remember getting a handwritten note on opening night and uh, I remember how much that meant to me as a young actor and I've carried that tradition along uh, as I've directed and I always make sure that everyone in the cast and crew gets a, a handwritten note um, and so I thank you for for that that oh, still sticks with me that's very nice I've, uh, I've got that note somewhere sitting around wow. so um, who, who are some of the um, um, the folks that have sort of come through the theater that you know have gone on and and, and done other things I'm, I'm thinking of uh, uh, let's see, Barry Brunetti's up in Chicago, isn't he? Yes, I'm, I'm he thinking is. of Barry. And, uh, and Michael Malden, who is in, I think, our second show uh, now at, uh, in Cleveland. Uh, I'm not sure which university he's, he's at, but he's a chair of the department uh, mm -hmm. there. Uh, Matthew Lopez, sure. who uh, started here and uh, was in the same production with you, as a matter right, of fact. Right, yep, yep. He, uh, he, was, uh, he was Peter, wasn't he? Uh, was I not whoever a single name from who, <laughs> whoever things, whoever uh, was the the sort of I think it was the the uh, the servant to the maid who I think I think yeah. so it's it's funny I think of when you talk about Matt I think of that show years later he was um I remember him getting laughs you know moving uh, furniture and things years later he was in New York and uh, he told me the story about how he got his equity card he was in a production and he was a dresser technically mm -hmm. and um, but he came out and he moved a piece of scenery got a laugh and the equity rep came and watched the show and counted up the number of equity contracts in the show and the number of actors on stage and they went to the producers and said what what's going on here and they're like oh no Lopez he's he's a stagehand he's a dresser they're like then he shouldn't be in costume and he shouldn't be getting laughs from the audience and um, they went they went to Matt and said hey do you want your equity card and he said, yeah, I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> you know? So it's funny. I'll, I'll be interested to see if I'm remembering. That story's about 15 years old now. Or, uh, so I'll be interested to see if I'm remembering it right. Um, well, did you grow up in an, in an artistic family? Um, did you do theater as a, as a child? I th no. I, in fact, I, Kaleidoscope was the very first thing. I did, did when I was in college, um, take a course in directing. Mm. And so the first thing I ever directed was it, it, when I was in college. But... Um, I was, you know, I've always been interested, but the opportunity just happened to fall in my lap now when this, when Kaleidoscope came along, so, um, but I'm glad it did. It was just really a, a bunch of fluke things happening in, in a row that get, got us started, got us started. Well, I mean, I've, I've seen you on stage. Of course, you've, you've done directing, you've done designing, you've done costumes, you've done lights, you've written shows. That's been. Is there? Do you have a favorite? Is there? Is there something that you? No, you, I, I love doing all of it, and mm -hmm. um, 
It's interesting too because um, when we first first started the Beach Civic Center, we, we uh, you know tried to find people that had had experience. There was one woman who had done lighting. That was it. So we pretty much had to learn to do every single mm -hmm. aspect of it. I, you know, the person that was doing costumes, we, we got to borrow some costumes from the University of Florida mm. for the first couple of our shows, and they changed their policy right before we did St. Joan. Right. And <laughs> so um, that's when I went to my wife and said, show me how to use this sewing machine, because we'll never get these 5,000 people in costume. Yeah. And so it pretty much was a, a growing experience, learning new things as we went along. Mm -hmm. There, There's always um, fun stories that go around along with productions, you know, war stories, if you will. Do you have any that stand out for you for either surprising moments on stage or uh, as you look back over the all the years? Are there any... Well, stories most of them that jump are out embarrassing. Of you. Right, right, right. Things <laughs> like Any that. we can say on the. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do remember though when we were doing 1776, mm -hmm. and this was like the second, third, to third time I'd been involved with that production. Mm -hmm. I was, I was uh, playing the gentleman from North Carolina. Okay. And um, I left out about 20 pages. Oh. It's. Uh, I had two monologues in the in the thing, and they, all of them talking to John Adams, and mm -hmm. so I started this one thinking it was the first one, and it was the second one, and I saw this pale look on his face and this blank stare. I looked around, and they were all looking at me on stage like this, yeah. and we happened to have a group that had just finished doing it somewhere else in the audience oh, and no. come to see it. So um, I had no choice but to continue with this. The speech and it was right. this one one before we, the one before we did the vote on right uh, and uh, the sec but I was doing the second one which meant the vote had already been taken so the guy who was in charge of the voting things mm -hmm. quietly started putting the, the votes up <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was uh, the, the, the embarrassing things like that happen from time to time and yeah that's yeah that's part of the part of the fun um, I think w I. I saw one of the productions. Um, was that the only one you were in as an actor? Oh, no. Uh, that one of 1776, I mean. Uh, I was in um, one here at the college, in fact. In fact oh, okay. uh, that was the first time I did one. It was, um, um, I played the Hen Richard Henry Lee mm -hmm. in that one. That's when Eric Helen Warner was, was oh, yeah. directing still. Well, uh, it's funny you talk about the monologues, because I, th I think that show is um, famous for having the longest, like 40 minutes with no music. It's got mm -hmm. the longest chunk of time with no song for a musical, which is which is pretty interesting. Yeah. So I want to make sure we have time to get this in. So if let's say that someone's new to the area and they they ha haven't found Kaleidoscope, which would surprise me because I think you guys do a fantastic job of advertising. I've often said that um, the college, uh, our program, uh, needs to take some notes because I see uh, advertising everywhere. But if I want to find out what the current shows are at Kaleidoscope, what's my what's my best way? What's my web the web address? Well, we have a, a Facebook page right. which you can go to, and it's um, the very first thing you see is all the shows that are in the season. We have a website, uh, kt-online.org, which gives us gives uh, the things that we're doing and kind of behind the scenes stuff and. Um, or you can just call our 265-3226 number to get reservations or actually you can get reservations on, online as well at, right. at both of the other, other places. So um, anybody who's interested can pretty much type in Kaleidoscope Theater and find us somewhere. Well, sounds good. Well, um, we're about out of time. I feel like I could talk to you forever, but I appreciate you coming in and Thank sharing you. a little bit about the about the history and uh, look forward to the the next show at Kaleidoscope. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Uh, this is Jason Hedden for State of the Arts. Uh, thank you, and we'll see you next time.